solution. It's a really specific thing. It has a definition. Right? The solution to uh, an equation is not just the answer. Right? Air quoting the answer here. Um, you're you're kind of done at this point, but that's not the solution. The solution to this equation, what is the solution to an equation? Can anybody define that? When both sides are equal, okay, something happens just before both sides are equal. I mean, it, an equation saying that they are equal, right? But uh, it's something just before that. Where you can finally find the number that if replacing like the g uh -huh. would make both sides equal. Right, so both sides are equal after you plug something in for the variable, for the g or x, whatever it is. If that's what we're looking for. What number can we plug in for g that will give us uh, the same thing on both sides, give us equal uh, sides? Well, Kumail does all this work, and it's correct, but it comes down to 4 equals 4. So what number am I supposed to plug in for g? Any number. Any number. If you come back to this step right here, before the g terms got eliminated on both sides, which isn't very common for that to happen. If you come back here, then whether we put 1 in for g, well, that would just be 6 times 1, that would be 6 plus 4. And over here, we have 6 plus 4. So that would be 10 equals 10. That would be correct, wouldn't it? But it would be just as true if we put 2 in there. 12 plus 4 equals 12 plus 4. Right? Put 3 in there. 18 plus 4 equals 18 plus 4. No matter what we put in for g, and we have the same thing in for both of the g's, uh, always going to be correct. So how many solutions are there? Infinite. infinite solutions. Not no solutions. There are infinite solutions. Any number you plug in for g is going to work. It could be positive, negative, decimal, fraction, square roots, any number. Zero. If you put zero in there, zero plus four equals zero plus four, four equals four. No matter what we do, no matter what we put in for g, it's always going to be true. In fact, you'd have a hard time trying to make this not true. There's no way to make it not true unless you do it incorrectly and put something in for g and something else for this g. That's, yeah, there's nothing that doesn't work. What is the, the word the book uses for this situation? say g is 2 or whatever the solution was. Whatever you would plug in for g that would make it equal on both sides. But anything works. So I like this more. This makes more sense to me. Um, and in, I'm sure later in the book and in Algebra 2 and in pre-calculus and in calculus, um, that's what we talk about. We talk about those infinite numbers of solutions. Right. And uh, that's, we got to the problem that Camille had, so could we solve this equation differently? I mean, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm not kidding, we come up with a different answer, but can we go by it a different way? What could we do? So we talked about how we can get the correct, you know, the correct thing. Um, but uh, is there anything like? Here's what Kumail did: distributed the two, distributed the one half, subtracted six g from both sides, got four equals four. Is there another way to start? Divide, divide by half on both sides. So uh, divide this side by half, we get twelve g plus eight. And over here, if we divide this, if we divide this by a half. So by half is the same as multiplying by 2 over 1. So we would get 4 times 3g plus 2. Okay. Here's kind of the reason why it's kind of called an identity. It's just kind of rewriting the left side to look like the right side. If you distribute the 4, you just get the right side. And that doesn't 
happen very often. That's not what usually uh, equations look like. Right? You don't just rewrite the left side and get the right side. It's one of the reasons why you call it an identity. Um, yeah, there you go. You start it differently. You do that, and you can distribute the 4. And you'll get 12g plus 8 equals 12g plus 8. And, you know, so there you can subtract 12g. You get 8, 8 equals 8. Lots of different ways you can approach it. So, yes, at least one way was this guy right there. Okay. So now Kira, working this incorrectly. <coughs> so in this step right here, meaning we get from here to there, uh, what was done incorrectly from here to there? Take a pencil or a pen, push it firmly on the piece of paper, until marks come out. Draw a map on the paper, communicate to yourself in words. Say what should have happened is good. You know, like it definitely gets at the mistake. If you can state what Kira did incorrectly, what, what, the, what she actually did wrong, what she would have had to do to get this thing done that she did, um, it's even better. So what's going on here? What did what did uh, Kira do wrong? She added 2h to 5h to get 7h. There we go. So he or she added 2h to get 7h. You don't have to add 2h to 5h to get 7h. On this side, the 2h is gone. But to get rid of that 2h, you would have to subtract here. Right. On this side, she added. And on this side, she clearly, she probably didn't write it this way. She just kind of did it in her head. Uh, subtracted 2h to get the 2h canceled. And over here, added 2h. So, why? Because, well, I guess we could say she didn't do the same thing on both sides. She broke the cardinal rule of solving equations. You've got to do the same thing on both sides. Time for speculation. Why do you think this happened? What do you think caused uh, caused her to make this mistake? <coughs> Take a guess. Mental math. Do it in her head. Um, do you think she actually added two uh, h on one side and subtracted two h on the other side? Do you think she actually did that in her head? No. Huh? No. no. She just. She kind of let 2h go away, and she knew something was supposed to happen on the other side. She added them together. Why do you think that might be what? How could a person do that? You gotta, you gotta guess as well. <coughs> Put like terms together. So she sees two like terms. She's not really thinking about it. She's kind of working quickly, does some mental math, and just puts 5h and 2h together, not thinking about the 2h is over here on the right side of the equation. The 5h is on the left side. Those aren't going to go together. I need to cancel it on one side and then do an equivalent operation on the other side. So uh, just uh, maybe just working too fast. So let's say Kira gets all the way done. She's, she's done something incorrect. She didn't realize it. She gets 9 sevenths. How can she see whether or not that was correct? Uh, plug it in. Plug it in. 
In fact, that's the very definition of a, of a solution. If she found the solution, what she, should, what she should be able to do is take it and put it in for h, and then both sides should be equal. So what could she have done? Uh, plug 9 sevenths in for h, which would look like this. It'd be 5 times 9 sevenths minus 7 equals 2 times 9 sevenths. 45 over 7 minus 7 equals 2 times 9 sevenths plus 7 sevenths is that 16 sevenths. Uh, so let's see, this is 49 sevenths. 45 sevenths minus 49 sevenths is negative uh, 4 sevenths equals 30. That would have shown her that that's, that's not correct. But she didn't have the right solution, so she can go back and find her mistake. Any questions about whatever, about this quiz or about the homework at all? Do you have one? Climbing Gym offers a yearly membership where members can climb as many days as they want and pay $4 per day for equipment rental. Uh, Non-members pay $10 a day to get the gym and $6 per day for equipment rental. Okay. So, I guess in scenario A, you just walk into the gym for $360 a year. $360 a year that scenario. Walking in the door costs how much? Huh? Well, to come into the gym, like it's already been paid. Like you walk in, you don't pay any money to go into the gym, you just walk in and out freely. You already paid $360. But then if you use equipment, then it's, it's $4 per day to use equipment. or you use one of those crazy walk wall walls that rotates around and you just are continually climbing, you pay $4 for that. Um, what's that? Can you slow it down? I'm sure it hasn't adjusted the speed. Um, in scenario B, it costs $10 just to walk into the gym every day and then it costs six, six? Yes. six dollars for equipment. Okay. Write the equation to find the number of visits after which the total cost of a member and the total cost of a non-member are the same. Then solve the equation. Okay. So just assuming like these same two people are coming to the gym every day. This person, having already paid $360, so they're not paying anything up front as they walk in the door, but when they use equipment, they're spending $4 a day. This person is paying $10 every time they come in every day, and then in addition, in addition to that, they're spending six more dollars to use the equipment. Okay. So if you're gonna just come in one day out of the year, you wanna do this, right? Just pay $16 and be done. If you wanna go in for a year, probably you wanna do this. Well, we're not sure. Um, so first we write an equation to show like, a way to solve for that, a way to figure out how many days uh, it would take for those to be the same, for those to cost the same. Okay. Well, um, let's say we go for x days, 
Let's look at this guy. How would we calculate how much it costs this guy for X days? Negative um, 360 plus um, 4X. What do you say? Does that sound reasonable? $360. That's not going to change as the, as the days go up, right? So 360 stays the same, plus $4 times every day that goes by. Okay? How are you going to calculate this? I'll get $10 times, or $10 times X plus $6 times X. Good, ten dollars a day to walk into the gym just to gain access to the gym plus six dollars per day to use the equipment. Okay. Now, what do we want to know about these two things? Are they equal? When they're equal. Oh, yes. Right. If you want to make them equal and figure out what x is, how many days it'll be before they are equal. So that's part A. Let's just write the equation. Um, oh, then solve the equation. That's what we're supposed to do. Solve the equation. So we got. 360 plus 4x equals, say, let's say 16x, right? Because you are just spending $16 total for every day. Um, 360 equals 12x. Divide by 12. Divide by 12. 30. 30. What does that mean, 30? 30 days. 30 days before. You have the Day 30, this guy and this guy will have spent the same amount of money. And after that, who's going to wind up not getting as good a deal? He, he's still paying $60 a day. Now this guy has already paid as, as much as this guy, but he's only paid $4 a day after that. He pays $60 after that. Okay, that's part A. Solving the equation, 30 times 30. days. Make a table for the costs of members and non-members after 5, 10, 15, 20, 30. Scenario A, scenario B. Uh, well, days, or they call it visits. All the same. Uh, they said 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. 30 and 35. Okay, so after five days, let's just do all these. After five days, how many, how much money is this guy spent? 380. And after 10 days? See, this is costing way less money than the early days. And as more days go by, this guy's spending more every day than this guy is. We're getting close. They even out at 30 days, and then past 30 days, this guy's going to pay more. All right? Any other questions? OK, let's turn in our homework. And um, I passed out that. Yeah. I'm 33. Uh -huh. Fraction. Okay. Don't let fractions scare you. It's just if you go to add them or subtract them, you need common denominators. You're going to multiply them, multiply straight across. And if you divide them, divide or multiply by the reciprocal instead of dividing by that fraction. So knowing that, just approach it the exact same way. Same way we would approach it if it was two plus five a equals six a minus four. Totally different equation. 
same approach. It's just that the numbers we're using are fractions instead of integers. So, what do you say? What would we do? So let's have uh, let's have variables only on one side. So how about if we subtract one fourth a? From both sides. This cancels out. Can I do three fourths minus a fourth? Yeah. What does it come out to be? One half. One half. One half a. Three halves plus one half a. Equals negative one half. No, what? Yeah? Um, if you subtract three from the two, right, it's one half. Okay, that cancels. Yeah, one half a. Negative one half minus three halves. Don't put in your calculator, don't do that, don't give in to your temptation to use your calculator. Come on, they're just fractions. Do they have common denominator? Yeah, half and half, two, two denominators. So we put them together. Negative one minus three. Negative four over two, so negative two. And one half A equals negative two. Are we going to get A by itself? Subtract two fourths from three fourths. And I just have it. Okay. Yeah? Divide by half. Divide by half. Divide by a half. Which would be the same as multiplying by two over one. Multiplying by the reciprocal. So that leaves A by itself. A equals negative two times two, negative four. We'll do the last one. Membership fee for joining the camping association is forty-five dollars. Campground charges members of the camping association $35 per night per campsite and non members $40 per night for the campsite after how many nights of camping until the cost uh, will be received. So, uh, if you want to sleep someplace, it's going to cost you something for the night. If you're a member, if you pay $45, then it's only going to cost you $35. pay a zero dollar membership fee, right? You don't join the camping association. Okay. Then it's going to cost you forty dollars per night. Make sure I'm capturing all that information. So we want to figure out how many nights would each of these different types of people have to stay at these campsites for it to wind up being uh, the same. And then afterwards, for this to wind up being a better deal. How are we going to set that up? Jared? 45 plus 35. It's 45 plus 35? 45 plus 35 is N. <coughs> N, okay, for the number of nights. Equals 40 n. 40 times n. We start off with $45 and we add $35 times however many nights. For one night we're going to add $35, for two nights we're going to add $70, and so on. Okay, so we'll subtract 35 n from both sides. 35 equals 5 n. guys are spending five five dollars more per night than these guys so if they wind up staying there for nine nights they wind up paying that forty five dollars anyway in a way that matters. usually how it
now people who want to sell you memberships who will try and sell you on it. And like, well, if you use this thing already, you might as well just join because it's cheaper than you can be selling. Any other questions? All right, let's pass the homework. And um, I gave you a review packet to prepare you for the quiz. So take that out. Ideally, you've already looked at it and you know the questions you have about it. And you'll ask those questions. Or you'll take a quick look right now and ask the questions before we start. X divided by 7 equals 8, which means well, we, want, we want X. <coughs> we tell us what 1 7 of X. Is. 1 7 of what we're looking for is 8. So what we're actually looking for is 7 times as big as that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. No? No? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> we want to know how much X is worth. What we're being told right now, right off the bat, is that the thing we want to know, if you divide it by 7, you get 8. This is 1 seventh of what we want. So the thing we want is 7 times as big as this thing right here. Or another way to look at it, if I multiply this by 7 over 1, get 7x over 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1. You multiply this by 7, x equals. Six? Six. Yeah, I'm not good at my time tables, people. Nothing to be ashamed of. What's next? Hunter? Uh, can um, solve the equation with words? Add 21x to 5x? Uh, no. This is a fraction, right? How do we add fractions? A what? Another fraction with what? Common denominator. We can write this over 1. It's a fraction, <coughs> but it doesn't have the same denominator. Multiply by 7 on both sides. Multiply by 7 on both sides? Just straight, up, straight across? OK. Let's see what, <coughs> what that does. Multiply by? Okay, so we gotta distribute the seven. Okay, so we get seven over one times negative 21 x over seven uh, minus seven times five x equals well, seven times 24. Wait, 
If I'm doing something wrong, just let me know. I, I think it's right. If I multiply both sides by 7, you got to distribute the 7 to both things. And I'm just showing that multiplication here. What happens when you multiply 7 by 21x over 7? We're multiplying 7 over 1 by negative 21x over 7. That's what's going on. Lily? Oh, we just got 7 divided by 7 right there. So we got negative 21x there. Uh, minus 7 times 5. 35x. Plus 168. So that was a nice idea. It canceled out the denominator of 7. Now we don't have any fractions to deal with. I can find uh, like terms, they're both negative, negative uh, 56x equals 168, divided by negative 56x equals 21 sevenths times x the same as negative 21x over 7? Uh, if we're multiplying 21 over 7 by x, right, we take it as an x over 1. So if we multiply straight across, we'll get negative 21 times x is negative 21x over 7 times 1, that's 7. That's the same, yes? Well, why it's 21 over 7. Three. We got negative 3, negative 8x equals 24, and negative 3. Okay. Little, you can read. Who's got a question? Connor? So what would you mean if you take um, 21 over 7 and divide by? Divide this by 21 over 7. Yeah. And if you want to divide this by 21 over 7, you have to divide the whole thing by 21 over 7, which means you have to divide 5 by 21 over 7. Pictures for a yearbook is nine and a half inches. Nine and a half inches. Uh, wide and 13 inches tall. The top margin is three quarters of an inch. So that's some uh, dead space where nothing lives. Some white part of base. Then um, the bottom margin is one inch. Space between each picture is at least six sixteenths inches. How many one and a half inch tall pictures can fit in one column? So we start at the margin and we put a picture. And there's a space between the picture and there's another picture, space, another picture. Okay. Each picture is one and a half inches. And the space between each of the pictures I say is at least 6 sixteenths. So at its smallest is 6 sixteenths, which is kind of a funny way to say 3 eighths. This might have to actually get 3 eighths. The thing we're trying to figure out is how many pictures can we put in that space? Uh, we 
have it all captured, all that information is captured in that picture. And now we see where we're up against. We're trying to figure out how this particular piece fits in here. And then we begin. Our idea is we've been in the past. We're saying, all they're telling us is that there's a margin here, a margin here. The, the, uh, the pictures are this tall, the space between is this much. And they're trying to figure out how many can we put vertically right here, from the top to the bottom. He's, has he given us just the right amount of information? Yeah. Has he given us any extra information? What's extra? It doesn't matter how wide the, pic the, the page is, right? None of that information is asked about. It's only given us vertical information. It's only asking us about vertical information. Right? Columns are vertical. They want to know how many pictures can we fit in this column. It doesn't talk anything about rows. So let's call it three halves, just so it's all in one fraction. That one and one and a half would be three halves. Three halves of x? Why three halves x? Or one and a half x? Oh, because you're trying to find how many pictures, and they're exactly the same pictures. And they're what? Exactly the same pictures. The pictures are, are one and a half inch each, yeah. So if we mul multiply three halves with one and a half by x, what will that tell us? size of one picture is three halves. From here to there, one and a half. Yeah. And the size of this one is one and a half. This one's one and a half. Like three halves and three halves and three halves. Yeah. Yeah. Like the final answer? Yeah. No, we don't want to be there yet. We want to get there. So what is three halves x? Three halves times x, what does that tell us? Say we let x be 5, 3 halves times 5. What would that tell us? In the context of this problem, it means what? What's that? Five pictures. Something about five pictures? What about five pictures? Could it be 5 if x was 5? Yes, there would be 5 if x was 5. What would 3 halves times 5 be telling us? How much space the pictures are taking up without any, you know, any uh, space in between them? Right? How much that's so? All right. So this tells us if we were to just put the pictures on top of each other, how much space that would take up. Okay. Plus the space that's in between. So it would plus what? Just three eighths. Plus three eighths. So what if there's Three-eighths works if there's two pictures, there's one space of three-eighths, but then there's another three-eighths if there's two pictures, and another three-eighths if there's four pictures. 
times x. Okay. So we're saying if there's five pictures, then there'll be five spaces. Yeah, the bottom one doesn't have any space. Yeah. So if there's five pictures, how many spaces in between the pictures are there? Four. There's four. You can see it. If you like that, one, two, three, four. If there's six pictures, how many spaces are there? Five. If there's seven, how many spaces are there? Six. Okay. So how many spaces are there if there's x pictures? X pictures. Y spaces. What? We could call it y, but we could also, if we knew how many pictures there were, I think we want as few variables as possible. So if we know how many pictures there were, can we find out how many spaces in between there were? Mm -hmm. yeah. By doing what? Math. Five pictures gives us how many spaces? Four. Four. Four pictures gives us how many spaces? Three. Three spaces. So what do we do? X minus one. Take the number of pictures minus one gives us a number of spaces. So how about x minus one? So three halves times x, that's the space that the pictures take up. Three eighths times one less than x, that tells us how much space the spaces in between can take up. Okay, so we add those together. And what should we get something specific? Or do we need to add more on or what? We need to add the margin. Add the margin. The margin. How much space do the margins take? One and three fourths. Mm -hmm. One and three fourths inches. So that's going to be seven fourths. Just so that if we had to add, like, add these together, there would be like five to eight decimeter with that denominator. Okay. Well, we added all the spaces that the pictures take up and the spaces in between the pictures and the margins. Is there anything else left to add up? So when we add it up, what should we get? We should get 13. Right, we have an equation with x in it. When we solve it for x, be how many pictures we could put in there. We got an inch and a half per picture plus three eighths of an inch per however many pictures there are minus one uh, plus the margins should be the total height of the page. And now we're making it real clear that nine and a half is completely irrelevant, no matter how wide the page is. We just have to try to figure out. Okay. So what should we do? Because you don't know how this, this equation gets solved all the way down, you can do one thing that you know is correct, and then another one thing you know is correct. Lily? Really? Uh, distribute three eighths. That's definitely true. You can do that, so we should do that. We have three halves, or three eighths, sorry, three eighths times x. Three eighths times negative one is just a negative three eighths. One thing we can do, uh, you know, one way we can change this. We might have a new step. One thing. What's one thing we can do? Ethan? Add the x terms. The x terms, they're like terms, so let's add them together. Well, we need to do something just before we add those together. How do we add those together? Uh, yeah, Nathan? Add 3 eighths and 7 fourths. Wait, I was asking about this right here, Nathan. Oh, yeah. How do we add these together? Let's subtract these or whatever. Yeah. What's the denominator going to be? Eight. Eight. Okay. So we got to multiply two by what? Four. By four to get eight. So we multiply three by four, and that gives us twelve. So three halves is the same as twelve eighths. So twelve eighths x minus three eighths x is what? Mm -hmm. it is eleven eighths? It's nine eighths. Nine eighths. Okay, and then, I mean, there's no, no reason why we shouldn't go ahead and say, do what Nathan said, save ourselves a little bit of uh, space. Put these numbers together. They also need a common denominator of eight. So we'll multiply this by two, multiply this by two. 14 eighths minus three eighths. Minus 11 eighths, right? This looks like this, this 
same last two steps that we always do, or almost always do to each equation. Subtract the constant, or add the constant, depending on what the constant is, uh, and compile something after that. Divide probably is what I would have done here. Uh, 13 minus 11 eighths. 13 over 1 minus 11 eighths. We need a common denominator of 8. 8. Multiply 13 times 8. on this side, we'll, get, we'll divide by a fraction, multiply by the reciprocal. Uh, let's see, the eighths cancel each other out, so we just get 93 divided by 9. divided by 9, but 93 divided by 6. 6.2. So, are we going to put 6.2 pictures on there, or are we just going to put the top of someone's head at the bottom of the page? No. So how many pictures can we find? Six. Or fit? Six? Six. And maybe we'll just take this and, and work it into the spaces in between. to here, or here, I guess, solve this, we should be able to solve 24. What do we do first? I get y by itself. by the reciprocal, so 15, or 5 thirds, 15 thirds is what you meant. So y equals, well, 15 divided by 3, that's just 5, isn't it? That's just the number 5. So negative 15 times 5.
question? All right. Well, this is a good